Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the acute inflammatory response and anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay, so we're currently looking at the acute inflammatory response. Okay, so we've discussed that when these three types of sentinel cells, dendritic cells, resident macrophages, and mast cells, which you have scattered over all over the place in your tissues, when they detect the presence of a foul or pathogen in our um, tissue, then they are going to send out panic signals. They're going to send out these pro-inflammatory mediators. They're going to send out interleukin-1, tumor necrosis factor alpha in the case of the dendritic cells and resident macrophages, and if you're a mast cell, you'll just degranulate and release histamine. Okay, now these three pro-inflammatory mediators are going to act on the endothelial cells of um, the uh, blood vessels which are in this local area, and they're going to trigger the acute inflammatory response, which really is a response of the endothelial cells, because the endothelial cells they are responsible for controlling what moves from the blood into the interstitial space. The acute inflammatory response is all about bringing troops from the blood into the interstitial space, and therefore it's all about endothelial cells. So we are going to talk about endothelial cells, endothelial cells, endothelial cells. So, let's start off with the three different types of microvasculature blood vessel that are within a tissue, okay? So, we are now talking about microvasculature. So, this is very different from the macrovasculature, surprisingly. Microvasculature means absolutely tiny little blood vessels, whereas macrovasculature refers to the blood vessels which you learnt in anatomy. It refers to the great veins and the big veins that you had to learn the names of in anatomy. It also refers to the big arteries that you had to learn the names of in anatomy. The microvasculature refers to the tiny little blood vessels that are within all tissues and you have absolutely loads of these things everywhere basically and you did not have to learn the names of these in anatomy you would still be doing it if you had to <laughs> learn the names of these they don't all have names you can't see them uh, well you can see them with a microscope but not with the bare eye these are tiny blood vessels okay so we'll start with what's known as a terminal arteriole Okay, so the term arteriole covers a huge great scope of sizes of blood vessels. Okay, down from things that almost are arteries, uh, down to these terminal arterioles which are absolutely tiny. Now these are the arterioles which are just before the capillaries, okay? So this terminal arteriole will branch into a whole bunch of capillaries, so let's draw three. Okay, so here are three capillaries formed from the terminal arteriole. So these are capillaries. Now capillaries are even smaller than the terminal arteriole, and they're often called the uh, business end of the microvasculature. And this is because these are the blood vessels where the exchange of nutrients and waste products will actually occur. So oxygen and glucose will leave the capillaries and go into the interstitial fluid to uh, be delivered to the tissue, and waste products, of which the um, archetypal example is carbon dioxide, will leave the interstitial fluid and come back back into the capillaries. So this is where exchange of nutrients and waste products occurs. Then what happens is all of these um, capillaries reconverge into a single blood vessel again. Okay, and this is a venule. Specifically, again, venules, that term covers a huge scope of different sized blood vessels. So to be specific, this is what we, we, we would call a post capillary venule. So it's the venule that you have just after the capillaries. Okay, so these are absolutely tiny blood vessels. Now to emphasize exactly how small they are, let's draw cross sections of all three. And we're not just doing this to emphasize how tiny they are, we're also doing it because it's going to be very, very important for understanding how uh, the acute inflammatory response works. Okay, so let's start off with the drawing of a terminal arteriole. Okay, so actually I should go a little bit further down for this. So, 
Firstly, you have the endothelial cells, which actually line the blood vessel. Now, this is a single endothelial cell that I'm drawing here. And the whole circumference will be lined by endothelial cells. And this should nicely emphasize how small these terminal arterioles are, because very few endothelial cells will make up the entire circumference of the arteriole. Okay, or the terminal arteriole to be specific. So I think I'd like a 5 to be a good number. Okay, so here's 4, and then we'll put in the final one in there. So the endothelial cells are varying a little bit in their size, but never mind. Okay, so here we have 5 endothelial cells, and that nicely emphasizes how small these blood vessels are, that 5 cells will make up the complete circumference of the uh, terminal arteriole. Okay, now these endothelial cells are held in place because they are bound to a basement membrane. Okay, so I'll draw this in turquoise here. So, um, this basement membrane which I'm drawing in turquoise, this is mainly made up of the protein collagen. However, there are other important proteins in it, such as uh, fibrillin is another important component, and laminins are also another compo important component that's within the basement membrane. Now, uh, the endothelial cells have integrins on their basolateral membranes, which attach to the laminins in the basement membrane, so they're firmly attached onto uh, these basement membranes. Okay, now, we're drawing a terminal arteriole, so this isn't the whole structure. You also then have a layer of smooth muscle cells around the basement membrane. Okay, so a very thin layer of smooth muscle cells, but still a layer of smooth muscle cells around this basement membrane. Okay, and these smooth muscle cells are arranged in rings, basically. So here is a vascular smooth muscle cell, and then it will be connected to another one over here. Okay, and they'll continue on to form a ring. So I want to draw this because it's important conceptually that they're in these rings. Now, of course, you won't just have one ring of vascular smooth muscle cells. You'll have multiple of these. Okay, and the importance conceptually of this is that if you can imagine what's going to happen if these vascular smooth muscle cells uh, contract, then their length is going to decrease. So each vascular smooth muscle cell will decrease in length. Now, if each one decreases in length, then that means that the whole circumference of this ring of vascular smooth muscle cells, and by the way, the abbreviation for vascular smooth muscle cell is VSMC, the circumference of this ring of vascular smooth muscle cells is also going to go down, okay? And uh, this will result in the diameter of that ring going down. So if you can imagine, if this is a ring of smooth muscle cells, then as the circumference goes down, the diameter is also going to go down because the diameter is proportional to the uh, circumference. Uh, circumference is pi times diameter, so the diameter is circumference divided by pi. Okay, uh, so... Um, that means that these rings are going to constrict whenever the vascular smooth muscle cells contract, and this constriction will be uh, will be conveyed basically uh, to the inner layers of the blood vessel, so to the basement membrane and to the endothelial cells, and that will result in the whole blood vessel constricting. And the lumen, the diameter of this lumen will get smaller, and that means that the amount of blood that you'll be allowed. Uh, allowing to flow through will also decrease. So that's the structure of a terminal arteriole, and the thing that will distinguish it majorly from the capillaries and the post-capillary venules is that it has these vascular smooth muscle cells surrounding the basement membrane in turquoise here. So let's now draw a cross-section of a capillary. Now capillaries are incredibly easy to draw. They're tiny little blood vessels. They literally, their entire circumference consists of a single endothelial cell. So here is a single endothelial cell making up the entire circumference of a capillary. Okay, and this endothelial cell again will be attached to the basement, whoops, the basement membrane. So it still has a basement membrane. But now this is it. That's it for the structure of a capillary. It has nothing else after that. It is an endothelial cell sitting on a basement membrane, and that is all it is. 
okay? And this little tube, the lumen of this uh, capillary, is ridiculously narrow. It's barely thick enough for a single red blood cell to fit through. So these are tiny, tiny blood vessels. Okay, then let's turn our attention to post-capillary venules. Okay, and post-capillary venules are kind of like a big capillary, and you'll see that this, um, thinking this way is quite helpful with regards to the acute inflammatory response. Alternatively, you could view them as a uh, terminal arteriole, but without the vascular smooth muscle cell layer. But really, it's more helpful to think of them as a big capillary, and especially when we're talking about the acute inflammatory response, because they're going to pretty do much do the same thing as capillaries as far as the acute inflammatory response is concerned. Or, in fact, they'll probably do it better than the um, capillaries. If anything, they'll do it better than the capillaries. Okay, so here is our endothelium uh, lining the lumen of this post-capillary venule. Okay, so again, they're about the same size as the arterioles as far as their lumens are concerned. Uh, so we've got five endothelial cells making up the circumference. And then again, they'll be sitting on the basement membrane of collagen. And then this basement membrane of collagen will be their most outer layer. So they've got a very thin wall, basically. But again, I want to stress that all three of these are absolutely tiny. You would not be able to see these with the bare eye. These are tiny, tiny cellular structures. Okay, so terminal arterioles, capillaries, post-capillary venules. These are going to be within all tissues of your body. You'll have arterioles going into capillaries, going into post-capillary venules. And wherever we are, wherever this infection has occurred, uh, the release of these panic molecules, these pro-inflammatory mediators, interleukin-1, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and histamine, are going to affect the endothelial cells of the terminal arterioles, the capillaries, and the post-capillary venules. And we'll discuss how in the next video.